domination has always been expressed as this sort of like accommodative foot, which makes it sound kind of squishy and and, and, and yeah, it's soft. But when the reality is, is that's my propulsive foot. It's the thing that we have to appreciate is the ability to evert the calcaneus when we're talking about propulsion because it is, one, it is my force producing position. Secondly, because it is my force producing position, it's protective. So imagine landing, landing in way early propulsion like a lot of people do and then try to cut off that foot. And so people say, well, it's supinated, so it's rigid, so that's your propulsive foot. I respectfully disagree because if you landed in that position, it's ankle sprain, ankle sprain sitting, right? right? And so what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to capture that medial calcaneus. And so I'm going to draw the foot in two orientations from, from a, a sagittal view and then from a frontal plane view so you can, so you can kind of see where this orientation is. So I'll just draw the ground here. And we'll draw, like I said, we'll draw this in two different, two different views. And so, as I'm as I'm coming down, as I make my first heel contact, and I'm here. That's like earliest of, of propulsive phases. Right. And so, what it would look like. So, this is hitting lateral calcaneus, and so I would be landing, like so, right. So these two feet are the same. This is my my frontal view, and this is my sagittal view, right. Gotcha. And so then I go to my foot flat position, but I'm still in early, right? And then this would look like that, where it's flat, right? And then I start to bring the uh, tibia over, right? So this would be more of like a mid, mm -hmm. towards max, propulsive base, right? And so what I have, like the foot position will look different from, from behind, but I've got a serious force going into the ground right. here. That's me applying ground of the force. But a lot of people would say that, that that's that's my, my ground reaction force that's coming back up. But that's me. That's me propelling. Right? I'm pushing up this way. Right. So even though I'm yielding through this phase, I am pushing up. Right. That's my, my ground reaction. Just so you don't collapse. Right? Well exactly, because if I didn't if I didn't propel, I would collapse. That's why the like the pronation has always been expressed as this sort of like accommodative Foot, which makes it sound kind of squishy and and, and, and yeah, it's soft. But when the reality is, is that's my propulsive foot. It's not like it's a relaxed foot. It's just accommodative to accommodate to the ground. But it's also allowing me to push up. But but that's why this rear foot stuff becomes so important. And then we'll we'll use a specific example that we ran into this week with the the little sprinter jumper that we worked with. Mm -hmm. And then she couldn't get her foot into the propulsive position. Right. And then I get to the far end here, and now I'm over top of it. And so now, so as I get further in this way, it becomes less and less propulsive. There's less force that I'm, I'm producing. And so now I'm going to go back to that. That's the end, right? So, so really, my, my high force, high propulsive phase is as soon as I make ground contact, I'm pushing. But right in through here, like that's a monster. And that's where a lot of people don't get very effectively and therefore they don't produce a lot of force or they can't protect themselves, right? So we try to do this globally because in, in many cases I've got stuff that goes up from the ground right. that will influence my ability to capture this position right. on the way down. But there's, there's occasions where that stuff do, just doesn't work and I need a local effect. And so what I want to do then is go through literally a local mobilization that we can use that's a really big bang kind of a situation that will allow us to, to take this early propulsive foot and then get us towards that mid propulsion phase with, with one really simple mobilization, there's multiple parts to it, but we'll demonstrate that and, and go through that. Well, we always go towards that once we try global uh, strategies and they don't work. Absolutely, yeah. You, so even if we see on video that they're staying in a supinated position and they're still capturing some IR up top in like say the near the hip or something like right. that, that still wouldn't even hint to you that, okay, maybe we need to fo uh, try this more focal strategy at the foot first. Always give them an opportunity to, to, to do something globally or systemically first. Okay. Because right? it may just be something as simple as, as pressure management above that's driving the, the hip IR. Right? But your, your observation is correct, is that that's typically what you're going to see. 
It could be, they could come in with knee pain, they could come in with the diagnosis of hip impingement, lower back pain. It could be anything because of this orientation where I'm, where I'm driving IR through the hip. So I'm trying to propel, but I can't access it from the ground up. Because her situation was, she had symptoms that were indicative of a supinated early propulsive position. Correct. But up top she didn't exactly present in that manner. Right, right. And, and then she expresses her apprehension. Yeah. She, she can't shake the ankle brace. Going back to this is a protective mechanism. Right. She can't access her protection, so of course she feels unstable. Of course she's going to depend on the ankle brace. Right? So let's, let's go through the, the mobilization and, and show that. For sure. No, so it, it, this, is, this is not just an ankle mobilization. This is, this is looking at the entire system from, from start to finish. I just have to think about how I'm going to, to bias everything from the ground up. That's why we have you set up like this. So we got a pad underneath, underneath your right hip. So I've got a propulsive element on this side. And you're in early propulsion before I start the mobilization. Because remember, I'm, I'm looking at this foot and I'm looking at everything from the ground up. So I'm going to start you where you are, are uh, biased and then I'm going to move you towards the bias that I want. So I'm going to move everything towards this, this middle propulsive phase, but I'm going to do it through your foot. And right. so literally we're going to mobilize everything. This is why you get, you know, when you do something local, it's kind of a hit or miss thing because a lot of people don't, don't consider what's going up the, the extremity towards the pelvis and then even towards the axial skeleton. So you could think of it like... We tried to drive it globally from top down, but now we're going to... work. So, yes, I'm going to reverse gear. But Absolutely. it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a cue of, I'm going to do manual therapy from the bottom up to get things going. Right. And then so I'm feeding you this exercise. way versus the system feeding outward, basically, right. is what, what I want you to think of. So, so i got to consider where, where I am. So, so this is a relatively supinated foot. So I'm plantar flexed and externally rotated, if you will. Um, and I've got calcaneal inversion. And so, so the eversion is essential here because that's what i got to capture when I'm in this propulsive phase, right? Right. So I'm going to show this. I'll show this from a distance first so you can see how everything goes up towards the, the axial skeleton, and then we'll zoom in and, and we'll do this locally so you can see the hand position and, and the technique there. But what I'm gonna do is, so I'm gonna take my, my uh, outside hand, if you will, because you could do this on the other side. In fact, you probably do it more frequently on the right side than you would on the left side. But um, slide down just like half an inch more close. There you go. So I'm gonna come in behind and I'm gonna capture the, the, the uh, superior aspect of the calcaneus here. So I'm almost on the Achilles, but I can kind of hook my finger underneath the, the uh, calcaneus there. So I get some leverage, because I need to distract a little bit. I need to make a little bit of space there. Okay, and then my thumb falls really nicely and comfortably into the sinus tarsi. And so what that does, see if I can show that right there, okay, um, is allows me to push the fibula superiorly um, laterally and externally rotate it, and that makes me space in the in the front of the ankle joint because remember the talus is wider in the front than it is in the back, and I have to get you towards propulsion. So if you're plantar flexed, then this is going to be cl a closed space. So I need to make space there, right? So I'm going to distract there, and then from there I'm going to evert. I'm going to evert the calcaneus. So let's show that evert. Now. As I move the subtalar joint towards pronation, I need the mid tarsal joint to, to unlock to truly capture this propulsive foot. But the problem is, is you don't have any ground contact, right? So I'm going to take my other hand, I'm going to go right across the mid tarsal joint, and I'm going to grab the first metatarsal. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn it towards ER, right? And so I can do all of this in one fell swoop, right? And I'm going to drive the mechanics straight up the extremity into the pelvis and you'll feel yourself wanting to turn. So right now the, the hip is oriented towards uh, ER, we're going to move you towards IR through your foot. Okay. So, so I'm going to distract, I got the calcaneus, I'll evert, there's my thumb, I'm pushing on the, the fibula, I'm going to reach across with this hand, grab the mid tarsal joint, I'm going to move him towards ER and then I'm just going to apply a downward force. I have a lot of leverage here that I can just start to move the foot and I'm just going to slowly work him into dorsiflexion and then he feels the stretch on the inside of the ankle and underneath the, the, the foot in the long arch there. And I just hold that. I could do oscillations if you're that kind of a guy 
or whatever gives you the, the best return on investment, but that's my big bang. So basically my hands are just doing that. Okay, now let's talk about going up the chain. So I'm gonna take this, so I got the foot position mm -hmm. captured, and now I'm just gonna turn you a little bit at a time, and work it this way, and I can just move around like that. Now I've got you turned, and you can kind of see I'm turning him towards that internal rotation propulsive strategy all the way up the, the chain. Okay. So I'm going to capture the, the superior aspect of the calcaneus with my fingers, and that's my distraction force there. I'm going to evert, so I got my other fingers to help me evert. My thumb falls right into the sinus tarsi, and I can glide the fibula at the same time. Okay. So as I evert, all of these forces take place, and you can start to feel the medial ankle start to, to expand and you, 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 start feeling you feel it up in the hip yeah so he feels the hip already starting to IR now I'm gonna take this hand and I'm gonna reach across I'm gonna grab the first metatarsal and I'm gonna ER that way so as as I pronate this ERs like so and I just I can kind of lean on this a little bit so it's, it doesn't take much effort for me to produce the force at all and you can see that I'm turning him inward and the more I turn this way and dorsiflex, the more IR I get up the chain. So since you asked what we would follow this up with, let's just demonstrate it, okay? So this is where we might use a, a rear foot elevated split squat because we can, we can bias it towards the early propulsive phase uh -huh. and then shift you into and even through this mid propulsive phase. But the thing that I want you to be aware of, Mike, as you go through this is make sure that you're capturing the medial calcaneus on the ground as you move from the earliest phase of propulsion through that middle part, okay? Now I'm just gonna tilt the camera down a little bit and I'm really gonna zoom in a little bit here too, so. Let me, there you go. Okay, Mike, so just go ahead and show them the, the position through the split squat. So I got inside heel. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just going to drive that forward. Even more as I come down. Yep. So let's do that again with just a little bit less valgus. <laughs> okay, so keep your knee pointing straight ahead, but capture the medial calcaneus. There you go. And so this takes a little bit of practice, so we don't drive the knee so hard because we're not trying to get excessive pronation, we're just trying to capture pronation, right? Yep. And you'll feel a lot of butt when you do that on that side. Because I want the knee to track straight ahead as you capture this medial calcaneus, right? And you can feel that already. And here, I'll just show Mike's expression as he does it for folks at home, how much fun he's having. Okay? So there you go.